program, there will, there will be time for media questions. For all media joining virtually, we ask that your display name includes your name and outlet. The media portion will be moderated and you will be asked to use the raise hand function at the time for questions. And just so everybody's aware, we are recording and live streaming the announcement today on FedDev's Ontario Facebook page. So now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Iquinder Gahir, Member of Parliament for Mississauga Malton, to make an important announcement on an initiative. Over to you, MP Gahir. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, George, for that warm introduction. And thank you to everyone for joining us virtually today. I am very pleased to be here on behalf of my colleague, the Honorable Philomena Tassi, who is the Minister responsible for the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario. Before we begin, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge that I am joining you from Mississauga on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, and the Wyandot Nations. As we know, the manufacturing sector remains a critical driver of the Southern Ontario economy. It provides vital goods for domestic and global markets and creates good paying jobs for Canadians. A growing number of disruptive technologies and increasing demand for green products and processes are evolving work and skills requirements across all manufacturing sectors in Canada. As the demand for cleaner solutions increases, it's important that we continue to make smart investments in green technologies across sectors, but especially in manufacturing. That is why I'm here to today to deliver some very good news. For nearly 25 years, the Eves Landry Foundation has worked hard to advance technological education and skills training to address the skilled labor and technical professional shortages facing Canadian industry. Today, I am pleased to announce that FedDev Ontario is investing up to $4 million for the Eves Landry Foundation to deliver the AIM Green Initiative, which launched last month. This initiative builds on the Eves Landry Foundation's previously successful AIM Programming Suite, funded by FedDev Ontario, which has supported hundreds of businesses in this region. Through the AIM Green Initiative, up to 36 Southern Ontario SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises in the manufacturing sector can receive up to $100,000 to train their workforce to adopt and adapt green manufacturing solutions. Eligible SMEs will have access to tailored training programs that support the adoption of new technology, green processes or procedures, or highly skilled personnel in areas that lead to green innovation or productivity improvements. And this investment in particular will support over 1,400 jobs in the manufacturing sector across Southern Ontario. More information on how to apply is available on the Eves Landry Foundation website. You know, I'd like to emphasize that investments like these demonstrate that the government of Canada uh, has a continued commitment to invest in businesses and organizations that are creating a greener future for all Canadians. Congratulations again to the Eves Landry Foundation, and I look forward to seeing your continued success. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, uh, MP uh, Gahir. And on behalf uh, of the board and staff of the Eve Landry Foundation, we'd like to thank you um, for supporting this important initiative through the Eve Landry Foundation. Next, I'd like to introduce Karen Breeley, who I'd like to say we are very fortunate to have as our executive director at the Eve Landry Foundation to say a few words about this important initiative and investment. Over to you, Karen. Thanks, George. And Pika here, Member of Parliament for Mississauga Malton, Acting Chair of the Eve Landry Foundation Board of Directors, George Gritziotis, Board of Directors, Lena from Carmina de Young, and all our attending guests today. On behalf of the Eve Landry Foundation, may I say how honored we are to be here today with our partner, the Government of Canada, to celebrate the innovate, uh, Achieving Innovation and Manufacturing Excellence Green Program for Southern Ontario. In today's challenging economic times, we certainly recognize that a healthy Ontario economy must be underpinned by a strong manufacturing base. The relentless pace of technology, weakened global competition, and the post-pandemic hangover has eaten away at our traditional markets, which we have claimed for decades. The carnage that climate change is having on the health of the planet is becoming more and more evident. 
more storms, swings in temperatures affecting food growth, and devastation of shorelines, rising waters, to name a few. All these things are affecting manufacturing, disrupting supply chains, food production, and creating unsafe work and living environments, not to mention the rapid changes in consumer demand. What we have learned, what have we learned as the world speeds forward? We have learned that we are strong, innovative, resilient, and forward thinking. We have learned that as individuals, employers, and industry leaders, that we can make a difference. We have also learned that the key to survival and prosperity will be continuous innovation alongside stewardship of the planet, developing new earth-friendly products, attracting new conscious customers, and finding better and more efficient ways to create a competitive advantage while taking care of our environment. And we believe that this can be accomplished through a talented, diverse, and highly skilled workforce driving green evolution. This is the only way we can continue to compete on a global scale, allowing us once again to enjoy the success that Ontario manufacturers have had in the past. We can be leaders and we can make a difference. We are only just beginning and we must be persistent and consistent. The funding that we are celebrating here today is vital funding, which will aid in securing a stronger future for manufacturing in Southern Ontario. This program is offering manufacturers in South, Central and Eastern Ontario funds to offset the cost of training expenses related to upskilling and retraining their workforce to adapt and adopt green manufacturing principles at the shop floor level. We are grateful to the Government of Canada by way of the generous support of FedDev through the Jobs and Growth Fund for their outstanding commitment and vision. I would like to take a moment to specifically thank MP Kahir and Minister Tassi, as well as the staff at FedDev for supporting our crucial program. Thank you for understanding that small and medium-sized companies are truly the backbone of a prosperous economy and a robust Ontario. Likewise, it's the people that work at these companies that make our communities strong and vibrant. The funding celebrated today will benefit South Central Eastern Ontario's manufacturing sector by increasing the skill levels of the current manufacturing workers. Knowledge will drive new sustainable processes to be explored, new earth-friendly products to be created, which in turn will sustain existing jobs and create new jobs. This is good for Ontario and it's good for Canada. Clearly you and your government fully understand and support the need for manufacturing competitiveness and you've taken specific and measurable actions to ensure Ontario can continue to be a competitive jurisdiction. Your tiring, tireless and unwavering support is admirable. The Eve Landry Foundation stands ready to continue our long-standing commitment to training and development programs. We continue to support and encourage the development of highly qualified technical people, focusing on green innovation and skills development. We understand the importance of this initiative for Ontario's manufacturers, and we are fully committed to its success. Lena, partner and CFO from Carmina de Young Fashion Designs, Inc., and CY Health, thank you for celebrating with us today as we launch the AIM Green program. Carmina de Young Fashion Designs, Inc. is a women-owned, women-led apparel manufacturer in London, Ontario, solely focused on creating and producing a socially and environmentally sustainable high-end line of women's clothing. In 2020, they 100% pivoted to creating medical isolation gowns to support the PPE shortage Canada was facing. Your concern for the planet, seeking out sustainable materials and processes, and recognizing a fully sustained value chain in order to ensure your low carbon footprint sets you apart as a role model. You have first experience of what our AIM programming can do for manufacturers. Thank you for your commitment to your people, recognizing the value of driving innovation through upskilling and how important it is to seek out and adapt to the more environmentally sensitive manufacturing processes. You are exactly the kind of organization our program was designed to help. And thanks to the funding announced today, we will be able to reach more companies just like you and yours. Lena, 
I'm going to turn it over to you. So please tell us a little bit about Carmina de Young Fashion Designs Inc. and the project you undertook to green your facilities and improve the skills of your staff. Thanks, Karen, and I appreciate that introduction. Uh, you've already kind of given uh, a lot of information about our company, but um, yeah, I'm the CFO and partner with Carmina de Young, uh, one of the women that owns the company. Uh, my partner, Carmina, is the founder. Um, we, uh, we are a gar garment manufacturer in London, Ontario, and it's our mission to reshore manufacturing of garments in Canada. And we've uh, proven over the last few years to be very resilient in trying to do that. As Karen mentioned, we uh, pivoted 100% through 2020 and 2021. Uh, in part of 2022, actually, to uh, make PPE. We were making isolation gowns. And as part of that process, we were making gowns for Canada that were of a disposable nature. So we wanted to be able to have a, uh, a process where we can, um, you know, go create a, a self-sustaining supply chain. And, uh, and we're in the process, as we speak, of uh, implementing that project. We uh, received the Eve Landry AIM uh, at Home grant in early 2022, and we're fortunate enough to, um, to have that funding to be able to help us train our management team as well as our team on lean manufacturing and creating a more efficient uh, workplace, as well as improving our quality standards and the measurement of those qual the quality that we have within our shop. So again, it was uh, taking us to a brand new level of uh, making sure we could uh, compete in this marketplace. And so with the help of the East Landry Grant, we uh, were able to hire a, a fairly expert consultant who had experience actually making, um, uh, um, providing uh, lean manufacturing expertise in the space of PPE and garment manufacturing. So that was very helpful to us. And so we went through, we had sort of two streams to our training. One was uh, with respect to our management team and leadership team, which was very valuable. And the other was to uh, have training of, of our staff all through the, the entire uh, operation from our cutter cutters to our sewers to our office staff. So um, it really did help us uh, become more resilient as, as you know, we are working really hard to be successful. Manufacturing of garments is not easy. It was a, you know, definitely a, a field or a, a sector that was very prevalent in Canada in the 90s, but a lot of the garment manufacturers closed, closed shop. And so, you know, we've been able to, to prove that we're here, we're here for the long term. In addition to manufacturing garments for others, we have our own line and uh, we have a women's sustainable line um, that you can check out at carmina.ca. So we've just relaunched after uh, throughout the pandemic, we were, you know, 100% making isolation gowns. So we're happy to be back uh, making our own, uh, own garments and selling our own products. And again, the Eve Landry Foundation was pivotal in helping us get to that place where we were able to continually improve our, our shop and our facility and, and make sure that uh, we're ready to face the future. So, you know, we are resilient. We're, you know, we're here for the long term. We will continue to make PPE, but we also want to continue to make our own products and, uh, and market our own products. And the, when we incorporated in 2018, Carmine and I both wanted our company to be a triple bottom line company where uh, caring for people and planet is threaded throughout everything we do. So we aren't most, we're not just concerned about profit. Everything we do has to come up uh, with a sustainable uh, perspective. So even as we launch our new Carmina line, all of our, our fabrics that we use are sustainable fabrics. We're looking at sustainable packaging. Uh, we're looking at traceability on our garments, being able to have like a QR code that actually traces the source of the material as well as where that garment was made. So we're very happy to um, to be still here and thriving. And uh, a lot of that's thanks to uh, the East Lander Foundation, the AIM grant. And we had a wonderful video done by uh, by their team, which was which is actually probably one of the best videos that we have of our our uh, our, our floor it was very well done. So we we have that on our website and uh, very grateful to the East Lander Foundation for their support. Well, thank you, uh, Lena, for that great story. And um, 
I don't mind saying a, a benchmark for sustainability for other organizations as well. Uh, thank you, Karen, and thank you again to MP Gahir and everyone else who attended today's announcement. So this concludes the formal portion of today's announcement. I'd like now to pass it over to Alyssa at FedDev Ontario for the media portion. I'd like to uh, remind the media online to please change your name to reflect which media outlet you are here representing. Following the media portion, there will be an opportunity for photos. Over to you, Alyssa. Thank you so much, George. Um, so any media online, if you can, can please use the raise hand function, we have time for one question and one follow up. So I'll just give it just a second. Okay, it looks like we have no questions at this time. The news release is available on FedDev Ontario's website. Thank you all for joining today.